Hey guys, Long here, back with another math video. Today we're going to be talking about balls and boxes. The question I have for you is, find um, some sort of formula or method of finding out the number of ways to put n indistinguishable balls into k indistinguishable boxes. Um, and this question is hard because in normal combinatorics problems, permutation combination problems, you don't have indistinguishable boxes. Um, and in order to illustrate this, I come, I've had I have two examples laid out here. Um, the number of ways to put two uh, indistinguishable balls in two indistinguishable boxes, which is two zero and one one. Notice that zero two is a duplicate because the boxes are indistinguishable. And um, the number of ways to put five um, indistinguishable balls in three indistinguishable boxes, and I've listed them out. As you can see there are five ways. Um, so the question is, is there an easy formula for uh, finding out the number of ways to actually do this? Um, that's up to you um, to solve. And without further ado, uh, I'll pause the video if you need to, I will go on to the solution. So the first thing that we notice is that um, there are two, two cases. Um, for every single one of these these problems, and uh, let me just clear the board here. There there are two cases, and the two two blatantly obvious cases uh, are that um, for every every uh, for every combination of balls in those boxes, they fit into one of two categories. So group A is um, no boxes are empty. And and let's actually and the second group of course is um, that there is at least one empty box, but let, let's let's approach group A first. Let's see if we can actually um, subdivide this question. So first, assuming no boxes are empty, how many ways can we put an interesting little ball box balls into k non-empty indistinguishable boxes? And there's actually a, a a notation for this. It's the way you partition n into k boxes, and uh, the partition indicates that none of the boxes are empty. And the, the formula for this is that there is no easy formula because um, because it's, re it's a recurrence relation. So actually, it would look like this. All right, so what does this mean, right? So the number of ways to partition n indistinguishable balls into k indistinguishable boxes, assuming no box is empty, um, is the number of ways to partition n minus 1 indistinguishable balls into k minus 1 in its non-empty indistinguishable boxes plus n minus k indistinguishable balls into k indistinguishable boxes. And um, and how how do we how do we why is this true? Let, let's let's prove this. So say you got n balls, right? You got n balls, and you gotta put them into k non-empty indistinguishable boxes. There are two ways you can group this. So group, uh, let's do lowercase a, is where at least one box has exactly one ball. So um, the, the, the numbers in this group would be something like 1 comma uh, something, 1 comma dot 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 dot. So that, at least one box has exactly one ball. And group B is all boxes have at least two balls. And and let's let's see if we can match the groups to the parts of this equation. Uh, every single combination under the partition of n comma k has to fit under one of these groups. Either the combination has at least one box has exactly one ball, or all the boxes have at least two balls. So for every combination, these are non dis uh, di not, um, disjoint distinct groups that uh, make up partition n k because uh, a combination has to go under one of these groups and they cannot be in both groups um, so actually the number of um, combinations in group a corresponds to the number of partitions in n minus 1 instinctual balls and k minus 1 instinctual boxes 
Uh, why is this? Because let's say you take away that one box with exactly one ball, and then over here, you can organize the rest of the balls in n minus one, the and the rest of the n minus one balls in k minus one boxes. So essentially, you take away one of the box with uh, at least exactly one ball in it, and then the number of ways to organize the rest of them is um, there are n minus one balls and k minus one boxes, so it's partition n minus one k minus one. The other scenario is if all boxes have at least two balls, so that will go like two dot 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 dot. In this case, because you know that all the boxes have at least two balls, you can actually subtract um you can actually subtract a ball from every single box. So if you subtract a ball from all k boxes, you'll end up with um you'll end up with n minus k balls and they're divided into k boxes. And that's partition n minus k, k. For every single combination um, in which the, you can divide, subdivide n minus k balls into k boxes, you can add one to each one of those combinations to get a combination in group B where um, all the boxes have at least two balls. It's a bijection. So um, that basically proves it. Um, Number of all the number of ways that all boxes have at least two balls is equal to partition of n minus k indistinguishable balls and uh, k indistinguishable boxes, and um, in the group where at least one box has exactly one ball, take away that box, you get you get a number of partitions of n minus one into k minus one boxes, and both of those make up uh, the number of ways to partition n minus one and indistinguishable balls into k non-empty indistinguishable boxes. Few. So we have that, we have that useful equation, and there really isn't an easy way to simplify this um, into a formula. So actually, um, if there's no way to simplify this uh, into a formula, we gotta just uh, bash it out. And when I say bash it out, I mean I have the table right here of uh, partition um, uh, partitions. So partitions and k. Okay. So there's a table. So as you can see, the number of ways to partition uh, nine uh, nine indistinguishable balls into two non-empty uh, indistinguishable boxes it would be four. Makes sense. Okay. So we have um, this useful table here. Uh, but we only have group A down. The other group B is where at least one box is empty. And then we do the same thing. We do the same thing we did for group lowercase a. Um, so if it's the zero, something, 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 we take away that zero. And what's left over is we have, um, we have, uh, we have n balls, n indistinguishable balls, because we didn't take away any balls, into uh, k minus 1 indistinguishable boxes. So the number of ways in group B is actually x and k minus 1. All right. Seems pretty good. Pretty, pretty, pretty good. All right. So actually, we now have this neat little formula. So now we have that x and k is equal to partition um, n k plus x n k minus 1. And we know that x n k minus 1 is equal to partition n k minus 1 plus x and k minus two, and hopefully you know where I'm going with this, is that all of this actually simplifies. Um, and you can actually do partition and k minus one plus partition and k minus two plus partition and k minus three, dot, 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 all the way to partition and one, which, you, which this part is equal to one. So um, actually, um, so if you want to find ways to put n indistinguishable balls into 
three indistinguishable boxes, assuming they are they can be non-empty, then you would actually just add up all the numbers behind it and uh, that number in that cell. So to illustrate this, I put together a, uh, a table of my own, so to speak. Uh, all right, I'll just I'll just shift over. So um, this is a table of my own. Not sure if you can see it, so I'll copy it over. Oh, look, it's sort of transparent. That's a tad annoying. Let me just let me just erase everything under it. So, um. If you actually compare this table to that table, so this table is um, this table is of this table is of x. Uh, the number of ways to put n indistinguishable balls into uh, k indistinguishable boxes, assuming the boxes can be empty, and this is the ways to partition them. And if we compare the two graphs, we can see that um, this uh, this four right here is sort of the uh, summation of these three cells. And this 11 right here is sort of the summation of uh, these three cells. So you sort of just add the cells up beforehand. And um, you can derive this useful table using the partition formula we came up with. And after you derive that table, you sort of just derive this table. And that's really the way, that's really, um, that's really the way you do it. So um, before we had an example where we said that uh, there were five uh, five ways to put five indistinguishable balls into three indistinguishable boxes, and as you can see, uh, that was correct based on this table. And from this table, we know that um, there are uh, there are uh, 28 ways to put nine indistinguishable balls into seven indistinguishable boxes. Um, and yeah, so that's sort of how you find it. I wish there was an easy formula. Um, but there actually isn't for these type of uh, weird recurrence relations. And uh, really, you sort of just have to grind it and bash it out to really find the number of waves. Hope you enjoyed this video. See you in the next one. Right. Um, 1, 10, 100. Uh, each, term is multiply each term is the last term multiplied by 10, so it's geometric series. And if we want to find the sum of this, um, this is the nth term.